Hello. Welcome back to Stay Stitching. My name is Carla and I'm glad you're here. Today we are going to talk about my June plans. And I have a lot on my June plans docket. Because I'm a school teacher, I actually have most of the month of June free. And so it's a time when I can um, get a lot done because during the school year, I just can't get all of that done. I come home from school and just kind of plop down and I don't do anything else. It's just a bad habit. But first I want to tell you a little bit about what I am wearing here. Um, I just said um again. I'm trying so hard not to say um. I didn't know that that was a thing that I did and the ironic thing about me saying um 52 times for a video, which now you're all going to look for and notice and you'll probably be so annoyed that you'll unsubscribe and never come back is that I was a speech teacher for 10 years in high school. I was a language arts teacher and I always had a speech class on my docket. And so one of the things that I looked for while I was grading student speeches was of course verbal non-fluencies. And they can be anything that you say repeatedly that are just a filler, that don't make any sense. And I would tell my students, it's okay to pause and gather your thoughts. The world will not come to an end. However, it is quite different talking to a camera than it is talking in real life. I don't actually think that I say um every three seconds in real life like I do when I'm filming a YouTube video. So this is something that I am working on. Please bear with me. Um, it's really, it's, I just did it. It's really embarrassing that I have this habit when I have spent half my career trying to break others of this very same habit. So anyway, let's get on with it. And if you see me looking off camera or smiling or whatever, that's because my husband has been instructed to please let me know every time he hears me say, um, as a way to help me break it. We joked around that he would lie on the floor and I would have a rubber band around my ankle and that he would snap me every time I said it, but I thought that might be a little bit difficult to concentrate on the video. So we're just gonna try to do this together, you and I, and please be patient with me as I learn how to become a better YouTube presenter. So this pattern is a May make of mine, and I just wanted to show you what I was wearing. It's a lot of fun, big flowy garment. You can wear whatever you want underneath it. Today I'm wearing a little tank top camisole type thing. I made view A. I plan to make view B. I did make this incorrectly. You know how when you've sewn a thing several times you assume that you know how to do it? That's what I thought here. But the placket on this tunic is supposed to be on the outside. And so it really came out a little bit whack because I put it on the inside and it's supposed to be out here. And I had never done that before. I'd always just stitched around and that's how that was done. And so I did do it incorrectly. But other than this piece flapping open and you can see my seam here, I don't think you can tell. And I might go back through and try to fix this by turning under that serging to make it look tidier. I'm not sure. Truthfully, I'm not that picky. I, I see people do sewing videos and they have made what I consider to be just a beautiful garment and there's this tiniest little thing wrong and they call it unwearable. I'm not to that point yet and I'm not sure that I ever will be. I don't really have a big quest for perfection. I sew for fun and as long as I don't think the garment is hideously unflattering, I will pretty much wear it. So I'm wearing this, I've worn it to work with a higher t-shirt on underneath it. So my first, in addition to the three items that I did not get finished in May, which I have already shown you in my May plans, I'm finishing up the pair of pants, and then there's two dresses. The Tea House dress from Sew House 7 and um, the Adele dress from Simply Sewing Magazine. Those are my three unfinished May makes, which I intend to do first. When those are three, when all three of those are finished, then I'm going to move on to this simplicity pattern. I got this in a kit, I think, from Fabric Mart. I've bought my kits in two places. Most of them I have bought on Craftsy, 
And then some of them I have bought on Fabric Mart, and I think this might be a Fabric Mart one. And I'm planning to make, I think maybe view A. I got this out a long time ago, and the pieces are already in the fabric, and the fabric is prepped and ready to go. It's been folded up for so long, I may have to take it all apart and re-iron this, we'll have to see. But uh, that is ready to go out of this beautiful striped chambray. That is such a gorgeous fabric. It's very light and just perfect for Colorado. 100% uh, cotton. It's gonna be glorious to wear. I just think it's gonna be beautiful. And if I had an opportunity to buy more of this fabric, I would totally do that. I think this would be fantastic shirting for my husband. I just, I, I just love this. I wish you could feel it, it's super nice. So hopefully I'll be showing you the finished product of this at the end of the month. The next one, this is part of my Make Nine, which I have not stated publicly. I have not put a Make Nine box on Instagram. I have not made a YouTube video about Make Nine. It's coming. I didn't start making YouTube videos until February 17th, and I just have not gotten around to that. But my Make Nine is gonna be a little bit different from a lot of people's. When I first began sewing, I discovered Craftsy, and I have probably spent a thousand dollars on Craftsy. I don't know. A lot of money, you guys. A lot. And I bought all those classes at $20 to $40 a piece. And my make nine is for me to go through nine of those classes and actually do what they say and learn from them. Because I probably have 25 or 30 of them. And I've watched most of them, but I've only followed along and done the projects on two or three of them. And that's a shameful waste of money. And so my make nine for this year is to get at least three of those done. This is from the very first, um, there we go. This is from the very first Craftsy class that I bought. And it is Barbara Deckert's plus size fitting and design and beyond. I can't remember what it's called but it's something about plus size fitting. And she goes through in that class pretty much every aspect of plus size fitting. And as a bonus, plus she has a, um, there I go again. She has a book out, Fitting for Real People or something like that, that is considered a classic. I don't have it, but I have heard other people in the sewing community talk about that and reference it. So I do think it's helpful. She goes through pretty much every kind of garment construction thing that you could want, from full bicep, bust, like dowager's hump, everything. How to make pants bigger, how to adjust crotch curves, how to, to do uh, kimono sleeves, princess seams, how to rotate darts. It's a very, very helpful class, and I can picture myself referring back to it. This is the pattern that came with it. And she even does this pattern. She makes like a little Chanel style jacket out of this pattern. She calls it the ladies who lunch jacket. She does a more um, gritty kind of biker-ish jacket out of this pattern. She makes this one right here in a beautiful pink linen. She teaches you some construction techniques. I have made this one right here. I didn't follow the class, I just made it. And it was the very first, very easy, very Vogue pattern that I made, and I feel like it went together beautifully. Um, that was kind of a funny pattern for me because I made it and it was way too big to begin with. Then I lost a bunch of weight, and now I've gained some weight back, and I'm gonna have to try it on and see where I am to even figure out what size to cut. But I'm gonna make this, and I'm thinking of making view A, and I'm thinking of making it out of this. This is 100% cotton. This is a kind of wild fabric for me. It's very graphic, and I don't do a lot of really graphic fabrics, but I thrifted this. I got this at a store 
here in Pueblo called New Horizons and I got a lot, five, six, seven yards. And so I thought that would be super cute with black, gray, or white pants or a pencil skirt. You know, these little peplum tops look so cute with pencil skirts. And so, and this would kind of be a wearable muslin. If I absolutely hated it, it would be okay. I don't know if I could wear a whole dress in this, but I feel like a sleeveless top could work. So that's the fabric. And all of the fabric that I'm gonna show you today, it has been washed. It hasn't been ironed yet because why bother ironing it until the second before you cut it out because it's just gonna get completely wrinkled. And in my house, a cat can scope out freshly washed, dried, and ironed fabric like nobody's business because apparently that's where they want to lay down and have a bath and do all of that stuff. So there's no sense in ironing it until I'm ready to cut it out. I never do that in advance. So my next project for June will be the Concord t-shirt. I bought this probably the day it came out. Cashmirette is my very favorite pattern company. If I had to, for some crazy reason, be limited to one fabric company, I can easily, I can safely say now that it would be Cashmirette. Before the Ames jeans came out, I would have found that a difficult thing to say out loud because they didn't have any pants. But now that they have the Ames jeans out, I feel like I can safely say that if I had to choose one fabric one pattern company to use forever, it would definitely be Cashmere. And this summer, they just came out with their newest pattern is the Ipswich swimsuit, which is adorable. And so now they even have a swimsuit. This t-shirt has three different necklines. It has two different uh, hem finishes, and it has two or three, three, no, three or four or five different ways you can do the sleeves. There's so much on here. This has become kind of a cult classic in the plus size sewing community because it comes together so beautifully. And there's hundreds of these out there if you want to see how it looks, the Concord t-shirt. The reason why I haven't sewn it is because when I got it and I took the pattern out, and I saw that all of the, like the different views and everything were a little bit nested. Here's a perfect example, right here. I don't even have to unfold it. Cut here for high neck, cut here for scoop neck, cut here for V neck. I'm gonna have to trace that pattern y'all. I don't like doing that but I'm going to, because I think this is gonna be a really fantastic basic in my wardrobe. And once you get it traced, it's there forever. And I even bought, at a thrift store, I bought it at New Horizons, I bought an entire roll of this stuff that is, it's kind of see-through, it, it looks like interfacing. And what it is, it's supposed to go down on the sidewalk, like outside of a church for a bride to walk over. It's got like jacquard flowers on it or something. And um, it's just supposed to be her little thing that she walks. Do you need to get to the teenager walking by? I've kind of cut him off from the kitchen. He could go outside and around to get into the kitchen if he was really hungry, which might happen. But I have that stuff, which will make me kind of permanent patterns. They're see-through, they're easy to trace, and so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna buckle down and I'm gonna get it done, and then I know that I'm going to have a beautiful and useful classic t-shirt at my disposal that I can manipulate and play with, and I'm going to keep my pattern intact. Normally, I cut right into patterns, because let's face it, if you bought a pattern at Hobby Lobby or Joanne for $2, why in the world would you trace it? I would never do that, even if the necklines were directly on the pattern piece like that. If I wanted to remake it with a different neckline, I would buy the pattern again. But these are, I can't remember how much cashmere at patterns are. They're either $14 or $18. Anyway, 
I've got to trace it because I'm not just going to spend $18 per neckline or per sleeve on these patterns. So the fabrics that I've chosen, now these are not set in stone. I have some lighter weight fabrics than these and I might save these knits for, if I have enough of them, for some Appleton wrap shirts. Jenny has done an Appleton hack. You can go on her website and buy the, not buy, I think it's free get the instructions and the pattern pieces to turn the Appleton wrap dress into a wrap top. And it isn't just like cut the dress off here. That's not all it is. She's made wider um, wrap straps that tie into a really pretty bow and some other things. So this navy blue t-shirt fabric, the reason why I say I might save it for the Appleton wrap is that this is a very nice, somewhat heavyweight. It's drapey, but it's a somewhat heavyweight fabric as compared to like a light summer weight t-shirt. This would definitely be a year round. If you were standing outside in a hot place, I mean Pueblo gets 100 degrees, I think you would melt in this. So I might change this, but I have a lot of jersey in my stash. A lot. And so, and I have some lightweight jerseys, cotton rayon jerseys or whatever that I could use for this. But I do have this one, which is a possibility. It's really nice, but might be for winter. I just kind of realized this today. I, I don't know why I picked these for summertime. The other one, this is gorgeous. This one is also somewhat thick. It's just as soft and beautiful as it can be. It is drapey. It has nice drape, so it would make a fantastic t-shirt. But again, this is nowhere near as thin as some of my other jerseys. And I don't know. What do you think? Do you use, do you use t-shirt fabric this thick for summer t-shirts? I don't know. What I might do is I might lay them out and then determine whether there is enough for like the three-quarter sleeve or whatever and maybe make those and have one if I'm gonna be out at night in Colorado it cools down pretty well I'm not sure about that the next thing I want to make is this huge skirt this is simplicity 1166 I love the top on this and that skirt. I think they're both gorgeous. The top has some really interesting, if you look right here, it's got some really interesting seams on there. This little bra top right here, view A, that's a joke. No one with boobs could possibly keep their boobs contained in that. They would just fall out of there. I don't know. I would never make that. But the other two pieces are fantastic. And if you um, have small little boobies, I think it's adorable. But it would not work for me. I don't even know how that model's standing there keeping them in there. I guess if you made it so tight you could barely breathe, it might stay on. I don't know. But anyway, view C. This one's a huge fabric hog. It takes four and a quarter yards of 45 inch fabric for all sizes. And it takes from two and five eighths to three and an eighth of a yard of 60 inch fabric. But it's so pretty. And I thought that this basic gray cotton, 100% cotton, I thought this would be fantastic. So that's the plan for that. Excuse me, I dropped my last thing. My last thing is another skirt. I've already made this skirt. I wore it in a video one time. This is the one that I made out of the bed sheet from Goodwill in Denver. 
and this view B is the same skirt except for without the waist. And so I'm planning on making that one. These are kind of fabric hogs too, yeah. View B is cut on the crosswise grain. I'm not sure why. They're all cut on the crosswise grain. But anyway, view B takes four yards from sizes 18 to 22, four yards, 45 or 60. And if you're making a size six, it takes three and three quarters of a yard. So even if you're a tiny little thing, you're still gonna need a lot of fabric for this. And I'm going to make it out of this thrifted fabric. Oh, by the way, all of the fabric that I've shown you today has been thrifted except for the very first one. The striped chambray is the only one that I bought in a store. This is a lot of pattern for me, but it's so sweet and so pretty that I thought it would make a beautiful little skirt to wear with t-shirts. Again, I'm not sure, it might be a little bit too sweet for me to wear entirely as, you know, completely as a dress, but it's so pretty and it's 100% cotton. It might be lawn. It's very lightweight and I just love it. I don't know what color t-shirt I would wear with it. Pale pink or something or, or ivory. This isn't like a pure white, like the pattern is white and this fabric is ivory. So that's my last plan for June. I will also be participating in the let's sew, let's sew together, sew together for summer. I don't remember what the name of the challenge is but um, it's a wrap dress and I'm going to be making the cashmere at Appleton in the short sleeve view. And so that's my very last one. So those are my June plans. I am going to do my level best to complete everything on those plans, including the three items that I did not get finished for May because May I didn't show well and I, I, wanna, I wanna make up for it because I love sewing and why make all these plans and have all the patterns and have all the fabric and then sit around and try to catch up with 13 seasons of Supernatural, which can get pretty stupid from time to time, even though I love it. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. We're having a beautiful rainy day here in Colorado. And if there's one thing a Coloradan can get excited about, it's water falling from the sky, whether it's frozen or liquid, we love water falling from the sky and we're having a nice rain today. I hope you're having beautiful weather wherever you are and have a fantastic day.